PNE1, Elsie. Go for PNE1. Verify AHB storage math. On air to ground one, how you read me? And we all know that when the going gets tough, and it often does. The top get going, and you have. And Sonny and I are honored to share this dream of space flight with each and every one of you. So with that, LC, let's get going. Now let's put some fire in this rocket. And Houston Skyline, and we are on the tablet to hit the ocean monitor. Experts will be taking questions here in the room and also over the phone. But before we jump to the question and answer portion, uh, we talked earlier about you know the tens of thousands of parts that have to work on the spacecraft, on the launch vehicle, and on the ground, and even the weather has to work for us. And today it all lined up, and we had a you know just a, a really a perfect countdown and launch. So now with uh, Dragon and Starliner, the U.S is going to have two unique human space transportation systems. And that, of course, we always like to have a backup that makes it safer for our astronauts. Now, Butch and Sonny do what they do best. They're test pilots. And they're going to test this thing from izzard to gizzard. And they're going to certify it for a rotational basis to send crew to the International Space Station. Program manager. Yeah, th thanks, Ken. Appreciate it. It's great. Um, and so for the rest of the day, really, it's about checking the spacecraft out. Uh, we will check out the NASA docking system and extend th that ring and check it out today. We'll check out the rendezvous sensor system that will be used tomorrow for the rendezvous. Really important system. We'll get that checked out. Right up front. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, Kristen Fisher with CNN. Big congratulations. Um, we have to have a lot of conditions that are just right before we bring the Starliner home. Um, and we're going to wait till the conditions are right and we've accomplished the test objectives before we do that. <clears throat> so we may see, um, you know, some additional time elapsed before we actually bring them home. Um, but th the reason we'll be doing that is to make sure we gather all the data we need to gather and, and to make sure that it's the right day to bring Butch and Sonny back to Earth. Today is incredibly significant because it's only the sixth 
time in the history of U.S. space exploration that NASA has a new vehicle to bring its astronauts into space. You know, this is the uh, crew flight test. And so after NASA certifies the uh, Starliner, then it will be able to serve the International Space Station, which remains an important scientific asset to the United States and the world. Zero, booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery, blazing a trail to scientific discoveries aboard Space Station. So when the final space shuttle landed in 2011, um, that marked the end of American capabilities to send astronauts into space from U.S. soil. And so uh, as part of the retirement of the space shuttle program, NASA arranged with the Russian space program to allow American astronauts to fly on Soyuz uh, vehicles to the International Space Station. And so that was how American astronauts got to space all the way up until 2020, when um, SpaceX demonstrated its first crewed flight of the Crew Dragon spacecraft. So it is a, a very exciting time for NASA to have two different opportunities to send astronauts into space, two different vehicles in their fleet available to them. Um, so as part of that, the mission profile includes a visit to the International Space Station. Um, I believe docking is scheduled for Thursday, June 6th in the afternoon. Um, and so uh, the astronauts will dock and they will visit the International Space Station for a few days and then um, return to Earth. And so that is the basic mission profile. And that is basically set up to mirror what it would look like when Starliner enters service. Roger.